memo. Many Americans, including this one, believe Barack Obama's emotional attachment to the Muslim world has hurt the USA. There's no question the Obama administration's greatest failure is allowing the Islamic terror group ISIS to run wild, murdering thousands of innocent people all over the world, including many Muslims. Mr. Obama has never, never acknowledged that mistake, nor does he define the ISIS threat accurately. That group is killing innocent people in order to impose a radical version of Islam on the world. The jihad is solely based on theology, perverted as it may be. President Obama, as we all know, will not even use the words Islamic terrorism. Again today, when telling the nation that America will maintain 8,000 troops in Afghanistan, the president did not accurately describe the situation there, putting forth that it was more about politics than Islamic terror. That is why the United States will continue to strongly support an Afghan-led reconciliation process and why we call on all countries in the region to end safe havens for militants and terrorists. But they are not just militants and terrorists. They are Islamic-driven killers who protected al-Qaeda before the 9-11 attack. Yet the President of the United States does not define the terror issue clearly. Here's why. Barack Obama's father, who abandoned his family, was a Muslim who eventually turned atheist. Then his mother married another Muslim, moving young Barry to Indonesia, where he was exposed to the Islamic world, even though he did attend a Catholic school in first grade. According to his half-sister, Barack Obama attended his half-brother's wedding in the early 1990s. Malik Obama was a Muslim. The factor has obtained pictures, allegedly from that wedding, which we believe was held in Maryland. Details on the ceremony, the exact location, whether the reports that Barack Obama was the best man, are very difficult to verify at this point. What we can tell you with certainty is that Barack Obama has deep emotional ties to Islam. As a boy, I spent several years in Indonesia and heard the call of the Azan at the break of dawn and at the fall of dusk. As a young man, I worked in Chicago communities where many found dignity and peace in their Muslim faith. 